it's Kelly, and today is either, it's the weekend of April 10th, 11th. I don't know if this will upload until Monday the 12th, 2021, because um, as I told you in some of my earlier videos, the cable guy is here. So we'll see how this uploads. And can you guys believe, well, you know about the 105 subscribers and about the um, basket that you can join in the little, I'm not supposed, am I not supposed to say giveaway? I don't think anyway, of the gifted basket that I'm doing to celebrate um, 105 of us meeting together in Blackthread Studio. So we're going to do that. I can't believe it's episode 20 already. And, uh, you know, here we go. Another weekend and another block of the month. Hey everybody, welcome. It's Kelly in Black Thread Studio. And you know what we're doing today? We're doing the fourth block of My Color Is Black of the Month. And you know, I chose kind of a citrine topaz color because that's my birthstone. And um, we'll just move right along and go on to the fourth block. I will make a note at the bottom in, a de in the description of the girl who did, it's a really quick quilt, um, quilt as you go little tutorial that she does. I don't even think she talks in it, she just kind of shows you. But that's the quilt as you go method that I'm following here, where um, there's no, no sash, no sashing. And that was the front, come, and then that's the back. How these join together here. So let's just recap that we have, um, let me show you here. We have black one, which is the center with the EPP pentagons and the yo-yo in the middle. And then black two, we did the kind of just squares and I'm doing all mine with a hand quilted floss from, I'm trying to think of what, what it's called. I think it's SP05, SP5 from the Thread Gatherer, and it, it's a variegated. And then my third block, which by the time I show this to you again, when I continue the video, this was the pinwheel that didn't match up in the middle. By the time you see this again, it will be hand quilted. I'll have my hexi in the middle and it will be stitched onto here. And then we are going to start the fourth block, which is kind of an applique flower kind of heart thing. So it's getting exciting to see this come together. I can't wait until all nine blocks are done and I can throw this in the wash and get it nice and soft and cozy. And by my birthday in November, I should be able to cuddle up with this. So that's my plan. I hope you're going along with me and making one of your own. And you know, you don't have to follow what I'm doing on the designs. It's just kind of a guideline and something for us to work on together so that we end up with a quilt at the end. Each square is about tw between 20 and 22 inches wide, depending on how you're doing yours. I just want you to match up each one of your squares so that they're the same size. So we will keep talking about that as we go along. So let's get to working on the fourth block. And then I'll show you how this is all coming together at the end. So here we go with the fourth block. So here we are finishing up going forward with our My Color Is Block of the Month. And this was the third one. This was last month's, you guys. And I said I would have it done and stitched together, and I don't because <laughs> I ordered the hand dyed floss from the Thread Gather to finish my hand quilting and keep going forward, and I ordered the wrong color. So that's why I hadn't done it, and I forgot that. So when I went to get it out, I realized it was the wrong color. So that's why I haven't moved forward with block three. But we are going to move ahead and go on to block four. So next time you see this, it will all be stitched the middle row. So I wanted to show you 
the middle one again because my main fabric is this one and we don't all have to do it the same way at all. I'm just telling you how I'm doing mine. So this was my center block, which everything is kind of radiating around and from. So since I loved this fabric, this background so much, and I knew I didn't have a lot of it, what I decided to do was in the nine block, it's going to be the center. So this fabric is going to be my center block, which is this one. This one that we're doing today, so it was black one, I'm sorry, it was black one, two, three. Now we're moving up to black four, and black four is going to be this background. And then when I get down to this black down here, it will also be the same fabric. Did I do that right? Yep, so this fabric will be here here and here. So I'm hoping that will kind of even out the, you know, the spatial, the way it, what do I want to say? You know, the way it looks, <laughs> we'll even it out. And then hopefully I'll have enough of this fabric to work into some of these other blocks. So today we are doing, I call it the flower burst, the flower heart burst. And it was, um, taken from my row pottery. It's not really row pottery, but the salt glazed old pottery motif that I had cross stitched that I'm going to do something with that I showed you in my basket giveaway gift away video. So I got this was my inspiration. That's what I wanted to say. This is my inspiration. So I roughly drew something close to that. So if you guys are doing this one, and this is what you want, all you have to do is email me at blackthreadstudio at yahoo.com, and I will scan this and send it to you. I promise you I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow, or Tuesday, or whenever you guys email me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, there's different ways that I do applique method, because I am going to applique this on. I am going to embroider the actual stem, but the little leaves will be little appliques. And I think I'm just going to do machine applique. So I simplified it. So, you know, from this, although I love the designs on that. And what I'm going to do is use freezer paper, just good old freezer paper that you get in a big bulk. I'm going to do that to, I'm going to trace it. You'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to trace it. And what I'm going to do is actually, because when you get this, go ahead and outline it in a Sharpie, like a thicker black Sharpie. And then you, I'm going to do two of these in reverse images. So if you use the Sharpie, you can actually see it from the back as well to trace your reverse image. So what I'm going to do, and I just have some scrap scraps left. And you know you want the shiny, can you see that shiny side? You want that down, because what we're going to do is I'm going to trace, you know what, let's do the heart first, since that will be. So I actually am going to do two of everything. I'm going to do one of everything this side, and then I'm going to flip-flop it, and I'm going to trace. I have to grab a pen real quick. So let me do the front side first so I keep myself on track here. So I'm just going to trace the heart. I'm only doing the heart. There's one heart. I'm going to flip it because I'm just going to do both hearts at the same time, I guess. I'm just tracing the reverse image. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now what I'm going to do, I don't want that much because that will stick to the fabric. I'm going to take these two that I drew and I'm going to iron them with the shiny side down on the face of my fabric and the fabric that I'm going to use for this one is this. 
because I thought it would show up on here. This is one of my border fabrics. I'm going to iron both of these on the fabric with the shiny side down. And then I'm gonna cut that out using scissors that I actually have a pair that is kind of um, dull enough. You know, they've been dulled using on paper, but they're still sharp enough for fabric, but they're not my good fabric scissors. So I'm gonna get both of those ironed down and cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them the same way. So I will come back and show you when I get done. I am using this one for some of the bigger leaves. And then I'm gonna use this one, just to have a little bit of a contrast for some of the smaller leaves.